obviously, how much time has that just saved? You've just exactly. programmed that entire job in, this is it. in less than a minute. Right, I am very excited for this interview with Phil because this is the machine I used to run, but it's a bit better. It's, it's a, a little bit, bit of an increase. Yeah, exactly that. So this is actually the VM, uh, VM30 Plus, so it's slightly different to the VM model that you were on personally. Uh, the Plus, mo Plus model itself has got a 12K spindle, and it's got 1270 in the X and 508 in the Y and 508 in the Z. And got. what about the bed? Because the bed's actually... It's got more to it now than it used to. Yeah, so instead of working on one encoder, it works on two now. But with regards to this particular model, as I say, uh, what this standardly comes with, the standard VM uh, model, the VM30, doesn't come with some of these extras which we're about to show you today. Yeah. Now, what are some of these extras? So what we've got with this, standardly, you've got the uh, second screen that comes standard with the control. As I say, it's a 12K. The standard VM30 model is just a 10K. On this as well, you've got yourself a Swarf Auger, um, and it comes with um, a CTS as well, the standard with it too. So CTS is cooling through spindle. <laughs> now, how much help it would have been if I'd have had through spindle coolant, <laughs> but we'll it. not talk about that. No, no, sure. Now, you've actually cut quite a good demo on this machine. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think some of the footage just shows how much power this machine's actually got. Yes. To have a 16 mil, seven flute M mil, this is it. absolutely ripping through this steel. This is it. So we're using our own uh, adapter path tool path to cut this particular demo. This particular one uses adapter path one way, which is more of a climb milling tool path. But yeah, we're using an SGS seven fluter uh, in a nick and tool holder. And yeah, we're just ripping 50 mil deep and it's cutting that particular, it's a bit of an eight in there, by the way. And yeah, it cuts very nicely. Now, just to get a bit Herco geek here. Sure. You were cutting that one way. But there's yes. other options as well. There is. There? There's also adapter path zigzag, which is conventional and climb cutting in the same tool path. Yeah, I really like that option because yep. you can really knock your cycle time by. Exactly that. It, people think, yeah, but you slow, you make, you're going slower. But yeah. yeah, but I'm quitting both ways, so I'm doing this is it. Fifty percent more work. Exactly that. Every pass. Yeah. So we still have the sort sort of traditional tool paths available, so outward and inward for pockets, but we have our own adapter path available too. So the actual name of the actual option is is alter pocket, and that comes with helical plunging as well. And there's also rest machining for picking out different places that the larger cutter couldn't get to in a particular profile. Now it's great that your controller has got the options. Yeah. Most of the controls you'd have to be using a cam system for. Yes, of course. Yeah, exactly that. Now, we spoke about the machine. Yep. I think we need to talk about this yep, control sure. because yep, yep. this controller has got some of the best features yes. on the market. Yeah. And obviously on the screen now we've got absolute beautiful simulation. You yes. can see everything. Exactly that. And even the slowing it down even more. So what's that about? So essentially what you've got is with our particular control, and I'll just jump quickly into the program itself. So we work with conversational data blocks, but if you choose to use NC, so CAD CAM, you can still do all of that if you wish to. Yeah. So we build up our program with what's called data blocks. So if you want to face the top off of something, you'll just literally pick a milling face block and skim the top off of that particular block with whatever tool you want to use. The good thing about our control now is it comes with other options, for example, something called solid model import. So that allows you to bring a step file straight to the machine and you can program conversationally straight from that particular step file. Now, just before we get on to the um, solid model import, yeah. there's one feature, well actually there's three features we mm. need to just quickly skim over because sure. you've got the 3D mould and the yep. swept surface. Exactly so, that. What are these features? So 3D mould swept surface, they allow you to do what's called sort of more 2.5D work. So it's not full 3D. So with 3D mould, you can take a 2D shape and you can essentially revolve that shape around a certain axis. Yeah? Um, with, funny enough, just going back to solid board and port just for a second, uh, we have a brand new feature with that. We now have access to what's called a surface block. So it's actually possible now to program certain surfaces from a model on the machine conversationally as well. And now there's one more point I used to use it all the time. Yeah. And I think it's quite a hidden secret really. Sure. And that is the tool optimization exactly because that. you can do that over the whole program. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is have one tool come out, go away and then come back up for like five minutes later to do pretty much the same sort of thing. So to make your life a lot easier, if you're doing, for example, a pattern which might be using a certain amount of tools, you can go ahead and you can optimize those tools. So the machine actually looks ahead and organizes your tools for you to save you unnecessary tool changes which for people at home, mm. that's great because if you're doing, say you're drilling yeah. and tapping yep. 50 holes, but yep. they're all different sizes, exactly that. 
you can get the machine or come out with a spot drill and it'll yeah. spot all the holes in one go. Exactly so that. So you're not pulling tool right. in and out. Exactly that. And even if, for example, you're going to be like counterboring those holes as well. To say if you're doing like a drill in an end mill situation with a mill circle, you can organize the lot with this optimization. So it will literally go ahead, drill all those holes, then counterbore all those holes or mill circle them, whatever you intend to do. So it organizes the lot for you. It's much easier. And I think this is great that you've got this straight on the control, yes. no cam system needed. That, exactly now, that. The last thing I really want to talk to you about yeah. is your 3D model import, because that's quite new. It is, it's a fairly new feature. Um, previously, it was only DXFs that you could bring to the machine, but now with this solid model import option, you can bring step files straight to the machine, because a lot more people nowadays are working with step files and STP files and things like that. So working straight from the model itself, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lot less people working with drawings exactly. on the back yeah, of it's, it's true. On cigarette packets exactly like that. they used to in the We've old days. Can you just quickly yes. just demonstrate your 3D model import? Yeah, sure. So what I'll do, I'll just quickly jump into a, a fresh program just quickly. I'll clear this previous simulation. This was the part we just cut a second ago. Um, and essentially how it works is I can go ahead and I can import a particular step file. So I'll grab a hold of this particular one just here and load this in. After a couple of seconds, it will go ahead and bring in this particular model. Yeah? So the idea is that I can go ahead and literally cut straight from this particular uh, model that I've just brought to the machine. What I'll do, I'm just going to take off my stock layer. So as you can see from this particular model itself, I have all these, these different features. I have this pocket feature with all these different islands. So if I wanted to go ahead and machine that pocket with those upstands inside, all I literally do is grab hold of the floor of that pocket. I'm going to bring it in as what's called a mill contour, which is like a lines and arcs block. So it's like a profile, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that particular block. It's going to ask me where the top of this part is, which is going to be a Z start just there. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that particular feature. Now, what you're kind of seeing just here, there's a little arrow. I don't know if you can see that. It's just there. That's my direction of cut. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to flip that because I want to go ahead and I want to climb mill this. And I'll go ahead and I'll bring that in. Now, what that's done, if I jump into this program now, it's brought in not only the boundary, which is all of this sort of, sort of boundary area, the sort of outer pocket, but it's brought in all five of these upstands. So all of these blocks have just come in at once. So all I literally need to do is jump into that boundary. Because I picked the floor of that pocket, it's found the depth automatically for me. I'll give myself a Z start, so just something so nice and safe above the job. And I'll go ahead and I'll track down a tool. We should have some tools already in here. Let's grab uh, that particular, Let's grab that 8 mm mill, we'll bring that one in. Now, as I said earlier, yes, we can do pocket boundaries, which is machining a pocket away, and we get access to these different, different, uh, different pocket types. So as we were talking about a second ago, we've got adaptive path zigzag and adaptive path one way. These are all the features you would have previously used at your previous work. So I'm going to do a zigzag cut just here, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that rip through this particular program. So it's just working out the adaptive path and then we'll see this work its way through and it's going to go ahead and machine all of that pocket away. Slow that down so you can see what's going on. But I haven't had to program any of that conversationally in some ways. What I've done is I've grabbed it straight from that step file and it's created all of those five uh, data blocks for me. So it saves now, you time. Obviously, how much time has that just saved? You've just exactly. programmed that entire job in, this is it. in less than a minute. Exactly that. So it just shows that having the right control yes. can save you time, time can save you money. Exactly that. And the other thing is, while that's now running, yes. you can program your next exactly job. Exactly that. So you're ready to go. Yep, so you're not, you're not just stood there waiting for that particular block to finish. You can program your next part that comes in, and once you've done that, you can crack on with that one too.